Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Thursday, February the 21st. We'll conclude the card at Oaklawn Park with race number nine, a one mile entry level allowance race. You can bet this card, you can bet this race with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com and immediately double your action. Bet 100, get 100 on sign up. Let's take a look at the field for race number nine. Again, it's a two turn mile race at Oaklawn, which features a short stretch. You can access free formulator pass performances for the race of the day. Well, where else? On the race of the day event page at drf.com. Download them and handicap along with me. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with the number one, Gray Sky. Remember when Gray Sky was second in the grade three Matt Wynn in 2016 behind a horse named Gunrunner? Me neither. Gray Sky just hasn't panned out. Two for 42 lifetime, nine seconds, 12 thirds, draws an advantageous post position and always seems to do his best running at Oaklawn Park. And he ran fairly well off the layoff last time out, but that race just hasn't come back strong. Four horses have exited the race, none have hit the board, and the best buyer speed figure of those four, only a 59. Gray Sky, a horse that if you're gonna use, probably best used underneath in single race exotic wagers. He does like Oaklawn, he does draw well, he catches a race with some speed, maybe he can get a piece. The number two single gem is another horse that's not the most prolific winner in the world, but he's back in the Robertino Diodoro barn, and Diodoro has done good work with single gem in the past, and we've got this positive formulator fact. Over the past two years, with horses aged four year olds and up, making their first start after a trainer switch to Diodoro in dirt routes off a two to four month layoff, and that's a mouthful. 45% winners, a $4.30 ROI. The last time Single Jim raced for Diodoro was in New York two starts back, and he split a couple of next out winners. Singapore Trader exited that win with another win by almost 10 lengths in a state bred non winners of one other than allowance with an 88 buyer speed figure. And the third place finisher, the horse that Single Jim finished ahead of, came back to win a $50,000 starter allowance in New York with an 81, and then took a $16,000 starter allowance with an 83 buyer. So Diodoro seems to get the best out of single gem, a horse that likes to be forwardly placed and appears to be the speed nearest the rail. The issue for single gem could be there are other speeds in this race and maybe a fast pace could doom him to defeat. The three is Dry Levy who started out his four-year-old campaign as a first-time gelding in a five-furlong sprint at Delta Downs. Was no match for a runaway winner that day, but at least the horse that finished last came back to rebound finishing second with a 71 buyer speed figure in a non-winners of one other than on the turf at Sam Houston. Dry Levy is going to race in a route for the first time. He has gone two turns in his career, but he seems to be a horse that likes to be forwardly placed in a race with other speeds. I'm not sure if Dry Levy can deal with the pace heat and still be around at the wire. I think Coach Adams is an interesting long shot. 15 to one on the morning line for trainer Greg Compton. This horse returned off a layoff at Oaklawn Park in a six for a long sprint. I think the connections were using that race as merely a prep. He ran just fine, only beaten three lengths by a horse named Nuclear Option, who came back to win at this non winners of one other than level with a 92 buyer speed figure. Coach Adams is now stretching out to a more appropriate distance. All three of his lifetime wins have come around two turns two of those wins at Oaklawn Park. I think he is cycling up to a nice race. The problem is another horse that likes to be forwardly placed. If he can rake just a bit in the second flight, I can see Coach Adams getting a piece of this at a nice price. The number five, New Colossus, is the seven to five morning line favorite, and this horse is no stranger to being the chalk. He has been favored in each and every one of his seven lifetime starts. And leading up to his most recent race, he was known as a money burner. He lost his first six races, all of them at odds of eight to five or less. But he found a field he could beat last time out for Larry Jones and Calvin Burrell. Going this distance over this surface, he was just able to make the easiest early lead possible, strolled on the front end, and then cruised home in visually impressive style. And he got a figure. He got a 93 buyer speed figure. So. Uh, forgiving handicappers of the first six races are going to say New Colossus, a $400,000 yearling, has finally found himself. He's going to live up to the potential that he showed in the mornings. I'm looking at it the other way. As we take a look at the Timeform U.S. pace projector for this race, New Colossus is not going to make the lead according to Timeform U.S., and even if he does, 
he's going to have to deal with a red bar, which indicates a fast pace. It's going to be a 180 degree different scenario than what he faced in winning that maiden, and he's going to have to do it against tougher competition. New Colossus is 93 buyer is very appealing on paper, and he's a horse I would expect to run well in this spot. But I'm not sure I want to take such a short price if he's chasing a very fast pace while facing tougher horses for the first time. The number six is I've Got Heart. And I've Got Heart, we see near the back of the pace projector. He'll take advantage if that pace projector is right and the pace is fast. He's coming into this race in sharp form, albeit against weaker competition. He just beat condition claimers going a mile and a 16th, a race in which the fifth place source came back to dead heat for the win against similar runners with a 73 buyer. He has the pace in his favor. He also has this formulator fact for trainer Doug Anderson. Over the past four years, with horses four year olds and older, coming off a win on dirt and moving from claiming to allowance company, 33% winners, a 551 ROI. The step up in class doesn't seem to bother the Anderson runners. He spots them very, very well. That being said, he needs a lot of things to go his way, and he needs a buyer boost. The Seven Shining Knight is a very logical horse for trainer Brad Cox. Judmont Farm homebred, only making his fourth lifetime start. You can expect tremendous improvement on any speed figure metric. He has Brad Cox in his corner. Here's the formulator fact. Past five years, older horses, second off the layoff in dirt routes, allowance dirt routes, 45% winners, 8 of 11 on the board, and a 352 ROI. And last time out, he was only beaten the neck in his first start against winners, and the horse he finished directly in front of came back to win a $40,000 non-winners of two life, but with a 92 buyer speed figure. Shining Knight has the right running style for this race. He's got the great Brad Cox barn behind him. He is a very strong contender in this spot. I've always been a fan of the 8 Moe's Mojo, but it just seems like nothing has gone right for this horse in his career. After a big maiden win, he ran an okay fourth in the grade three mat win, and then was away from the races for over a year. He's obviously had his share of physical problems. On one of the Breeders' Cup days at Churchill Downs in 2018, he ran a bang up second in a non-winners of one other than allowance race, a race in which he dueled for the lead throughout, disdainfully dispatched of his pace foe, opened up the lead in the stretch, and was only beaten a neck by a solid horse in Tis Mischief. The problem is he hasn't run back to that race in his two subsequent starts. He is getting blinkers here, and this is a horse that has broke well from the gate in most of his races. I wonder if Stuart Elliott's going to try to show some speed in this race. Take the race to New Colossus. Uh, Time Form US believes that he could make the lead if necessary. Mo's Mojo has some back class just doesn't win very often, but he's a horse that you could certainly consider. I think the number nine is an interesting new face at this level. That's Golden Bullet going out for trainer Norm McKnight, already winning at 23% at Oaklawn. We taught, we uh, throw up the uh, formulator fact for Golden Bullet. Past five years, older last out winners on dirt, 32% winners, 282 ROI. The horse has won two out of his last three races, and while he only beat condition claimers last time out, I like the way he did it. He found a great spot, prompting the pace three wide, attacked on the turn, had already taken over the lead, swinging into the stretch, and then drew away to win as much the best, earning a career best 83 buyer speed figure, a number that was validated somewhat when the sixth place horse came back to run second with a 91 buyer speed figure, albeit in a lesser race of $40,000 now winners of two life. Golden Bullet's going to have to handle the rise in class against allowance horses, but he's sharp, he's tactical. I think he can work out a similar trip as last time and you got to respect this barn. They seem to move horses up. Coleman Rocky is the number 10. This horse is stretching way out in distance. He returned off a layoff going five and a half furlongs. He ran just fine that day, but the race has come back weak. We're going to see how he does at a mile. He has won at the distance on turf in the past. This is a horse that I think they're just going to take back and try to make one run, and if the pace is fast, maybe he can pick up a minor award at which he should be a very square price. Take a look at my top pick for the Thursday race of the day. I like Golden Bullet, despite the hike in class. I like the way he finished off that field of claimers last time out, one of which came back to earn a big buyer speed figure. Think a similar trip is coming. Not sure we're getting the 8 to 1 on the morning line, however. I think 5 is fair on Golden Bullet. And I'm going to go 9, 5, 7, and 1 in the Thursday DRF bets race of the day. Play it with a new DRF bets account. Double your action right away with DRF bets. Ready, set, Bet. Approximate post time for the ninth and final at Oaklawn on Thursday, 510 Central. Good luck.